God bless you. And listen, we are so glad that you are with us again on tonight on the prolific hour. God has blessed us to be here one more time, and we are ever so grateful for being here. Want to say while we're here, please take the time and like and share with the audience, share with what we're getting ready to do on tonight. I'd like to say thank you for certainly our bishop, Bishop O.C. Booker, for allowing us to minister on this stead. Thank you to our jurisdictional supervisor of the women's department, Mother Shirley Hughes. Thank God for certainly the greatest music department in the world, the first jurisdiction of Illinois Music Ministry. God bless you for your work and your support in the music ministry. Certainly like to thank those of you all that will be listening and will be listening to this great conversation that we're getting ready to get into on tonight. Uh, the prolific hour certainly was given to us, but here was the scripture that the Lord gave us for the prolific hour. It comes from John chapter four, verses 23 and 24 is where it's coming from. But the hour cometh now is when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in the truth. And that is what the Lord has given us for this prolific hour. I want to share with you, the Lord has been so good and see so great and so greatly to be praised. I want to share the song that's been on my heart all day long. Song says, I may not be the best at anything or have the best of anything. Sometimes I feel like I'm the least of all, but I know someone, glory to God, who has everything and he is my everything. And I'm happy just to know that I'm his child. Here, here is the nut and bolt of this song. It says his name is Jesus, the righteous son of God. He's the lily of the valley. He's the bright and morning star. His name is Jesus and he's my everything. And here it is, I am happy, glory to God. So you can't know that and then be depressed. You can't know that and, and not live the way he wants you to live. I'm happy just to know that I am his child. Listen, I'm telling you, God is so great. Who is like our God? Nobody like our savior. Listen, we're getting ready to go in to what we're getting ready to do tonight. Listen, we have certainly, I'm gonna get into introduction in a minute. But let me tell you, she has certainly been across the length and breadth of this country. We are excited to have her on just to ask some few questions and just to get to know the one and only Bishop Jacqueline E. McCullough just a little bit more. She is certainly a, the, a word expert and she's a stickler for the content of the text. And she tells us that the words preach right, exegeted right, put together right, preach under the anointing of God will give us liberty. And let me tell you, I am living proof, glory to God, that the word will preach right will give you liberty. And I'm glad about my salvation. I'm glad to know Jesus. I'm glad to be a servant of him. And I'm glad to be a part of the remnant church. Listen, we're getting ready to see and hear from her. I'm excited. I hope you all can tell that I am. Because let me tell you, uh, saints like Dr. McCullough only come around once in a generation. And to have an opportunity to sit at her feet and speak with her, it is certainly a humbling experience. So we're getting ready to go in to tonight. Um, we're going to ask we go straight into, and let's get straight to uh, our guest on tonight. Let's go to the introduction. Let's hear a few things about her and we will get into all of the other stuff later on. Let's hear. Bishop Jacqueline E. native of Kingston, Jamaica, is a second generation 
and CEO of Gem Ministries, Inc., a nonprofit religious organization ministering the gospel of Jesus Christ and providing evangelistic tools such as books, tapes, DVDs to hungry souls around the globe. Bishop McCullough is also the founder and president of Beth Rapa Christian College and Theological Seminary. She was a registered nurse at Harlem, Harlem Hospital Center. Furthering her religious education, she was awarded her Doctor of Ministry degree from the Drew Theological Seminary and currently holds a Master's of Arts degree in philosophy from New York University. She has also engaged in postgraduate study at the Jewish Theological Seminary. Bishop McCullough spearheads the World Alive Medical Mission, which has provided free medical clinic services to over 30,000 people in parishes throughout the island of Jamaica and the nation of Liberia. She is the author of best-selling book, 105 Days of Prayer, and has also authored The Other Side of This, Satisfaction of the Soul and the Daily Devotional, Daily Moments with God in Quietness and Confidence. An innovative songwriter, Bishop McCullough has released the CD, This Is For You, Lord, where she was the writer and worship leader for nine songs. Her most recent release is titled A New Sound. She was featured in the book Messenger by David Ritz as one of the leading ministers of our time. Please help us welcome Bishop Jacqueline E. McCullough. Please allow us to receive the one and the only in her grace, mm -hmm. the Bishop Jacqueline E. McCullough. My mm -hmm. God. I am so happy that you're on with us, Bishop McCullough. Thank you for having me. Thank you. <laughs> Bishop, yes. you, so I have some questions to ask you, but Bishop, I want to say to you, I've been watching for a little while. I'm only a young man. <laughs> you preaching and hearing your preaching the gospel, and you're certainly a stickler to the text. Mm -hmm. And I know sometimes when you're preaching, you'll say, you know, y'all might write me and get in trouble, but I don't care. And it's just to free the people of God. And I want to say to you, I've been listening to you and I've been listening to your messages that I could get to. And it has helped me in my personal life and my personal devotion with the Lord. I just want to share. Mm -hmm. that with you. Thank you. Thank you. So so let's talk. Dr. McCullough, listen, um, you've been all over the world and I know everyone knows you. Everyone loves you. But tell, let's talk about the beginning um, of your beginning. I know that you're not from uh, Chicago, you're from Jamaica. So <laughs> talk a little bit about your beginning as a child. Okay, I was born in Kingston, Jamaica, and my mother and father were in ministry. My father was a pastor, my mother an evangelist. And um, he, he li we lived in the inner city, and he was a, a, a tent preacher. And um, he would preach under the tent and minister, and it was right in the ghetto. So he was an inner city ghetto preacher. But my father was extremely passionate about the word of God. He could preach for two hours. <laughs> Don't say anything. So he could preach for two hours. And my mother was also a preacher, and she, she loved to sing. So she did the preaching, she did the grooming, she did, you know, she did all of the things for the young women and she worked along with my father. Uh, he, he came to the United States in, in the 60s and um, he came because, and I love to tell this story, um, a Caucasian missionary came to Jamaica and she was there to do missions. And, and sometimes when people travel to other countries, they're not always treated well. Mm -hmm. And she was not treated well and she was being abused and whatever. And she was at the bus stop and my father was on his way home and she was crying. And my father said to her, what's the matter? And, you know, he was a very engaging person, very charming. And, and um, he, he said to her, what's wrong? She says, I'm here doing ministry and I'm hungry. She said, they're, they're not treating me well. Mm -hmm. My father had a bag of oranges mm -hmm. and either it's either 50 cents or 75 cents. Don't quote me, but it was less than a dollar. Mm -hmm. And he emptied his pocket and gave it to her. And she wept. And she said to him, 
I live in California. And when I get back, I'm going to sponsor you to the United States. But you know, coming to the United States, you need sponsorship. It's not very easy. You talk about border control. It was border control then. Yeah. And so she, he laughed and said, oh, she was just being kind. Maybe about a month later, he got a letter. And miraculously, the immigration passed him and he came. Now, mm -hmm. he, he thought he was going to California. Now, my father was very, very, uh, he wasn't fearful. Uh, you could put him anywhere and he'd land on his feet. Mm -hmm. So he would get on the bus and, you know, and he would travel from city to city, going to the south, not the west. <laughs> and he would walk into a church and he would say, my name is Elder Phillips and I have the word from the Lord. And they would let him preach. And that was his honorarium. And that was our money coming home. He didn't end up in the West. He ended up in the East. And he ended up in Harlem, 132nd Street and Lenox Avenue. And he walked into St. John, the Pentecostal Church. And um, Bishop, the late Bishop Lenora Smith was the presiding bishop. And so I was raised under women bishop. So um, she, he walked and he said to her, my name is Brother Phillips. And I have a word from the Lord. And he preached and she fell in love with him because he was a preacher. And he, she, she made him an elder. And she said, now, Brother Phillips, you have to bring your family. You can't be here by yourself. And I'm, the church is going to sponsor them. Mm. So miraculously, my mom and I came to America and landed in Harlem. Wow. And that's how it started. A bag of oranges mm. and either 50 or 70 cents passed on mm. to make sure I got, like Paul, on broken pieces. Yeah. Had to get here. I have to get here. Mm. <laughs> so that's how it started. Yeah. And he preached and my mother preached and I was there most of my my teenage and young adult life. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. Mr. McCullough, when you came here, when you got here, um, how did that, you know, schooling, how did they, how did I, that? It was horrible. For one year, I cried because um, in, in Jamaica, you know, when you're a certain age, when you're um, 10 years old, you're 10 years old. You know, you look 10 and you dress 10 and dressing 10 for Jamaican at that time is that you wear ribbons because you're still a little girl. You know, you wear ribbons and you wear socks. So I had all these ribbons in my hair and this little hat, you know, and I came and um, it was it was a culture shock. You're talking about Harlem in the 60s. And we, we lived on, 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 in an apartment on top of the church mm -hmm. and um I cried every day because my father went to work and my mother came over and she also got a job. So I was home all day by myself. My sister didn't come yet because she was in school and I would run to school and then run back home and lock the door. And I would cry because I miss my friends and I miss the culture. And then they would laugh at me, you know, and, and my accent was so strong. I mean, they couldn't understand what I was saying. And the teacher would answer, ask me a question and then they would laugh at me. And I, I love school. I love learning. And I said to myself, oh no, I, I'm not going to fail. Mm -hmm. So I, went, I would go home and stand in the mirror and take my time. And at, at that time they say speaking Yankee and I would speak Yankee and I would form my words. And that's how I learned how to slow down, not knowing that the Lord was teaching me public speaking, you see. It was right there, but I hated it. I cried until I got to the church. Come on. And the, the church at that time, we had maybe about 50 members on the choir. And I would sit there and watch the young people and they would sing and, and, and there was so, in, that, in those days we had, they had community. It was, it was not like it is today. Mm -hmm. The church was the hub. The church was a place where people fellowshiped and got together. And I cried, 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 cried. Mm -hmm. And I didn't get saved until I was 13. Mm -hmm. And I was sitting in, in, the, in the middle seat on the end, uh, in the middle of the church rather on the end, and they sang a song, Lord, I want to be a Christian in my heart. Mm -hmm. And I felt like my heart was coming out of my chest. Mm -hmm. I felt like, I said, God, I just want to be a Christian. Mm -hmm. I, and it's, it just took me over. Mm -hmm. Even when I think about it now, my heart starts beating fast mm -hmm. because I wanted that more than anything else, more than life itself. Mm -hmm. And I ran to the altar and that's all she wrote. It was... Wow. It was over. <laughs> wow. It was over. It was over. 
Bishop McCullough. Mm. So in that time, and I'm in that time, and here, here I'm just going to be honest with you, Bishop. I'm sitting here trying to ask you questions, but I'm so amazed, and I'm trying because I remember I always watch you, and I see the background, and I'm like, Lord, I'm really talking to Bishop McCullough right here. Yeah, yes, you are. <laughs> Listen, but here is my question, Bishop. During that time, uh, the church, church, uh, there was a different uh, mm -hmm. back then than it is now. Uh, what what is the difference that you see from back mm -hmm. now in the church that we mm -hmm. the now? Well, for one thing, we were raised in an era where even if people weren't saved, they they sent their children to Sunday school. Mm -hmm. it, it it still had that element of 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 church religion. You know, and and everyone wanted to be in some kind of church. And Harlem was the hub of churches. You you know, you have Abyssinia, you have New Covenant, you know, you have um, Bonner's Church. You know, mm -hmm. it was it, we all fellowship. It was just everybody was in church. People went to church on Sunday. So so in in that kind of atmosphere, church was respected. There was a fear of God. You know, you hear the old people say, I'm going to put the fear of God in you. Yes. We, we had that fear of God. We also had a respect for our elders. Mm. We had a respect for leadership. And, and we, we knew that they weren't perfect. I mean, you know, when we sit and, and, and laugh at all the mothers, you know, because they all had their little ways. And, and we, we weren't, you know, we weren't that far removed from people falling or failing. But we had such... We had such a fear of God. And then the thing that we had was community. Mm. The church was, we ate together. We hung out together. We didn't go home on Sundays. We went upstairs to the kitchen mm -hmm. and we would eat out of each other's plate. Then mm -hmm. we would, would, would drop each other off. We would fall. I took the train because we moved to Brooklyn and it took an hour and a half to get from Brooklyn. So we, a group of us lived in Brooklyn. So we traveled together on the train. So you're talking about, you know, spending time. They would come to my house and my mother would cook and I would go to their house. And, and we after on Friday night, we would go to, you know, Evangelist Watson's house. We would sit on the floor and eat fried chicken and we would talk about God and we would talk about being filled with the whole. It, it was a community. We didn't have a life outside of a life. You see? Mm -hmm. We didn't have an afterlife. Mm -hmm. come on. We didn't have an outer life. Come on. Everything was centered around the church. I did my homework at the altar mm -hmm. and I had a straight A average. We all would come in early, especially on a Friday when we would sit down and do our homework because we wanted to come back on Saturday. We wanted to have it done. So we all sat down and did our homework together. And then we would, of course, we would shout all night, you know, and, and in those days we had plastic shoes and you, know, you put a little Vaseline on it to make it look shine and patent leather. But by the time we get ready to go home, the shoes here were broken. But it was, that was our, that was our pleasure. Mm -hmm. We found pleasure in worshiping together. We, the church brought us pleasure, uh, community, friendship. There are people in my church after all those years that I taught in Sunday school way back in, they joined the church. They're young people and couples right now. I'm teaching their grandchildren. I'm teaching their children that came out of that community. That's a that's a lifelong relationship. We 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 learned the same thing, and then we were taught to to want. You know, listen. If we didn't get the Holy Ghost, we would die. I, I used to cry because mm. everybody got the Holy Ghost, <laughs> and 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 I remember you know a, a, an evangelist named Sister Chapman. She was young and attractive, and we always sit there and stare at her. And and when all of them got the Holy Ghost, I cried all the way home. They thought I was having a heart attack. Mm. And then the Friday night now, she said, and you will get the Holy Ghost tonight. Well, I jumped up like I got it already. <laughs> and it was after, sir, after this, mm. uh, at the altar call, three of us got the Holy Spirit, filled with the Holy Spirit. They had to carry me home. Mm. On the train, I spoke. Mm. One person sat here, another person sat there because they knew what, they thought I was drunk. The people on the train mm. thought I was drunk. Yeah. And when I got home, I spoke. And the next mm. day, the man came to fix my mother's sewing machine and I spoke nothing but tongues. He didn't hear no English. I didn't know what he said. Because you see, that was the epitome of the joy of the Lord. Yes. 
we were taught being empowered with the Holy Spirit is going to make us different. Now, it was a little erroneous because even though we were filled with the Holy Spirit, it doesn't mean we're going to be perfect. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we thought that, you see, we thought we wouldn't have any more evil thoughts anymore, even though it was erroneous, but it was glorious because it was something that we look forward to. Yes. And the world held little or no attraction for us. Now, did we make mistakes? Yes. Did some of them go out and get pregnant? Yes. But we went and found them and brought them back. Yes. Did some of them fall? But we had such a strong community. Oh, so-and-so is not coming to church. We all showed up at the house. Mm -hmm. You can't do that to the saints now. You got to have an appointment. <laughs> you, you know you have to call away three weeks ahead of time. Yes. <laughs> yes, mother. Dr. McCullough. So I, you're, I, I'm gonna go back a little bit. Uh, I kind of got ahead of myself, but you are you're about your parents. Um, they longevity. They 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 lived a long time. Just yeah. can you share just a little about how long they live? How yeah. old they live? My, my father died when he was ninety, and you know he died, and um, he died just going to sleep. You know, mm -hmm. my father was a very interesting man. You know. Um, he, he was very vocal and he expressed himself very freely. And, um, you mm -hmm. know, we, we, when we think about him, the family thinks about him, we think about all this stuff. Oh, it was interesting. I, I think they should have been on a sitcom. But anyway, my mother lived to be 105. Wow. And I took care of my parents. You know, they lived with me. No nursing home. Mm -hmm. They had 24 hour service. And um, I better not walk in the room and let, smell anything strange. They got to always look good, smell good, and whatever. Come on. And, and my mother went to be with the Lord at home in bed very peacefully. But even down to the last, when I went to visit my father at the hospital, he was ministering to me. And, you know, he was just closing out. You know, mm -hmm. I want you to do so-and-so. I don't want you to do so-and-so. I don't want you to do so-and-so. And that just that's just a piece that I carry. Wow. All right? My mother now, 105, she was nothing dementia about her. Mm -hmm. um, she was bedridden because she suffered from arthritis, but very alert and full of shenanigans. <laughs> yes. She, but loved the Lord, loved the Lord, loved his word, loved to sing. She loved, to, she was very musical. Wow. Um, but I've, I've never, there's never a time in my childhood that I didn't hear prayer. There was never a time in my childhood that, that there wasn't Bible study. There's never a morning that I got up that my mother wasn't sitting with the Bible open. Mm. And um, that's all I knew. And even when I tried to run away from it, where, what can I do? It was, I was ruined. <laughs> my father used to preach with me in his hand. Mm -hmm. He would hold me like this while he's preaching and the sweat would run down. I'm a baby and he's preaching and I'm doing like this while he's preaching. And the people would say, put her down. He said, no, I know what I'm doing. Mm. I'm preparing her. I want her to hear the sound. Wow. So, you know, they weren't perfect, you know, but, but um, they, they were interesting. They were interesting. They did a lot of interesting things to be around them is to have life. Trust me. <laughs> <laughs> You, Bishop McCullough, sorry, you were always, uh, I'm going into to the preacher, if you will. I'm going to get into the songs in a minute. But, you know, um, when you started uh, preaching, uh, you know, preaching is like, a was like a male dominant. Yeah, yeah. Um, so when you began to preach the gospel, can you tell me? How was that experience? What the good, the bad, the ugly, whatever. How was that experience? With yeah. Well, it started at, at St. John Pentecostal Church. And remember, I had a female bishop. You see, in Harlem and Brooklyn and the Bronx, we had a consortium of female bishops who had churches under them in the 60s and the 70s. And some of those churches still exist. Mother Horn's um, organization still exists today. Mm. Um, so you had Bishop Smith, which was my bishop, who was head of the Mount Pisgah organization. You had Bishop Counts, who was head of the St. Mark's organization. Mm. Then you had Mother White and you had Mother Horn. So mm. I was raised up in, in that era. Yeah. And they all fellowship with each other. 
Yes. So there was no, in my, and my mother was a preacher, so I, I wouldn't understand what you were talking about. I mean, mm. you, you know, and, and, and Bishop Smith was such a lady. She was not masculine because, you know, people think that in those days, you know, to preach, you had to be a little husky and carry on. But she had on, she wore these beautiful robes and she always had on jungle gardenia perfume. We all, when she was walking down the aisle, we could smell it. <laughs> and, mm. then, and then the hat had to match the robe and very dainty. She was a school teacher, so she was very articulate. So I was not raised, and my mother was always dressed. Always, trust me, I paid for it. She was always dressed. So I was not raised in an atmosphere that intimidated me uh, in terms of my gender. I wasn't even gender conscious. Mm -hmm. Now, when I would preach my first sermon, I was what, 20 something, maybe 19, 20 years old. And I preached the sermon, um, um, Consider the Lilies. Wow. And, and Matthew 6.33 is still my scripture. Seek ye first the kingdom of heaven, all his righteousness, and all these things. I live by that, shall be added unto you. Mm -hmm. I was so scared, I thought I was going to die. And, and, and my peers were looking at me. If I tell you what I said, I'll be lying. <laughs> but I know I read the scripture, but I don't know what else I said. <laughs> and when I got through, the, you know, the bishop said to me, all right, little girl, because you were always a little girl, you know, little girl, um, I don't want you to go get any big attache case because in those days, the preachers would carry these big attache cases, huge and big Bibles. That means that the bigger the case and the bigger the Bible, the more anointed you are. So her thing to me was, don't be buying, getting any attache case, stay mm. humble. Mm. You may preach the gospel, but you have to be groomed. Jesus. Come on. I thank her for those words. Mm because I've seen them come and I've seen them go. But anyway, that was my first sermon. Um, and then I stayed at that church until she died. And then I moved back to Brooklyn. And then I had my other church experience under the late Bishop McKinley. Now, now St. John was boot camp. <laughs> Elam was graduate school. Wow. Because he was just brilliant. He was just brilliant. I mean, what can I tell you? Bishop McKinley? Yes. So I'm going in, into your preaching when you're preaching the, the word. Um, you're such a stickler for the text. Mm -hmm. Believe in what the scripture says. Don't add nothing in there. Say what is written and just stick to it. Mm -hmm. And I know you get they say you get in trouble for that. But Bishop, the importance of the scripture mm -hmm. being you know, say it right. Timothy said the church is the pillar and the ground of truth. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that's our assignment as the church. Mm -hmm. I've been listening to you, Bishop. Mm -hmm. And the, how important as preachers mm -hmm. to hold up truth and stand. Mm -hmm. as we're living in a day where churches, bishops, pastors have walked away from the faith, walked away mm -hmm. from the church, mm -hmm. never open it again, Bishop. Mm -hmm. um, how important is the, the scripture and the text mm -hmm. to you. Mm -mm. Listen. All right, calm down, McCullough. Now listen. I I didn't I don't love preaching. Mm -hmm. I love the word. That's where I got caught. If I didn't love the word, I wouldn't be a preacher. Mm -hmm. Because I never thought I never saw myself as being a preacher. In my mind, you know, preachers were always broke. So I, I went to I went to be a nurse and then I went to be a doctor and have my own, you know, my, my own profession. So I never saw that as being the the assignment. But I love the word while the mm -hmm. other young people were around the corner hanging out. I was sitting in the class. I was studying. I was te I taught all the classes in Sunday school. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I opened up the door and I taught the baby class, the best class in the world. And it, so the word of God is what got me. And then my, my teachers in church, they always bought me books, you know, and they poured into me the best way that they could. So the word of, listen, the word of God fascinates me. And that's what got me hooked. I don't have to preach. I just, I just got off a of teaching. Um, a, a teaching a special group of young people that I believe are going to be the movers and shakers of the next century. Just teaching them some basic things. The Lord laid it on my heart to teach it. And that's all I, the word of God transforms. It mm. inspires. It, 
it it cuts it yeah. just so that's what that's what hooks me now then i got to bishop mckinley and if you think i'm crazy you couldn't stay with him because you know you can be up preaching and and you go off into something and you will hear his throat clearing mm. you know what that means you better get back to the text and get back to the text quick and then he'll say, and, and, that means, and what else is the text saying? Mm -hmm. It's not about you. Yes. The word of God is sharp. Mm -hmm. It's quick. It's like a two-edged sword. It cuts down to the recesses of the mind. You understand? It opens up the deep, dark areas yes. so that we can be transformed. And I heard somebody say the other day, you all just open your Bible and talk about the word. So what are we going to talk about? You. And your blood can't even deliver. Your blood is worse than a chicken blood. You mm. cannot even deliver us. Mm. And we have done such injustice because if we hold up the word, then we can't be the star. Mm. Put, put that in. Put that in, Brittany. Brittany, I didn't mean to cut you off, Bishop. Put it in. If we didn't hold up the word, you can't be the star. You, some, you, 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 can't, you can't. The word and you can't stand on the same platform. Somebody has to die. <laughs> Somebody got to go down. And we don't want to go down. We, You see, this whole prosperity gospel and this new, you know, um, pro proliferation of everybody being apostle, bishop, whatever, has opened up the door for, for stage and for performance. Mm. So you don't have to know the word to perform. Mm. You can Google somebody's sermon and, and say anything you want to say and arouse people, especially in the black church, and you, you'll be accepted. So nobody's asking. There's no accountability. There's no accountability. My bishop was strict accountability. No preacher in my church preaches in the pulpit without coaching. Come on. They have, you have to tell me what you're preaching. Come on. And, and you have to tell me where you got it. Yes. read it to me where is it found and what is it saying mm -hmm. and if I feel like it's not saying that I said well you got to go back home and study it because it's not saying that Wow. because unless you preach what he says you see this is the only place where God reveals his word how does God reveal himself he doesn't come and, and, and appear to me in a white robe standing in front of my bed and talking to me yes. he's not in man he, he reveals God we only discover what God reveals. God reveals and man discovers. So what else, where else are we going to find him? Mm -hmm. the, 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 the sky and the moon and the star, that's general revelation. Even the atheists can recognize, or oh, somebody, somebody made this. That's for the world. But special revelation is for the church. And the word was made flesh. <laughs> Who? Go over it. Don't, don't do that because, you know, on, don't take much for us to go off together. Come on, Bishop. Woo! Mm -hmm. Bishop. Bishop. And it's criminal. It's criminal to take people's time and money and bastardize the word. We're going to be held accountable because we have to stand before God and we're going to be judged for our works. And we, if, we, if we don't give the word, we're going to get it from the politicians. Mm. We're going to get it from the from the educational system. We're going to get it from your culture. Where are you going to get the word from philosophy? I, I, what? what? Where you going to get it? Mm. That's what. And you know, I'm I'm in I'm in the Hebrew University in the Institute of Hebrew Hebrew University. So he asked me. I had class today. I left there with a headache because I said to myself, I must be punishing myself. <laughs> but when they take when that Hebrew language which is what the Bible was originally written in. And when they begin to tell you how to look at the verb and look at the noun and see what it's actually saying, unless we get the original meaning, it has lost its power. I can't talk, Bishop. Go ahead. <laughs> no. And I have a responsibility I have a responsibility to the people that ordain me. When you are ordained, people are saying, I trust you. That's why, you know, when I was ordained, I had to walk all the way down the aisle. Bishop, Bishop McKinley said, walk down the aisle so the folk could see you. So if there's anything wrong with you, they could say it. What am I saying when I walk down the aisle? 
He's saying, I'm co-signing her. And I'm saying to you, she is safe mm -hmm. to teach and to preach. Mm -hmm. We let anybody walk down the aisle. We give them churches and give them this and the other. But it's not safe. Why isn't it safe? Not because you're raping, not because whatever. But when you withhold the word of God, when you withhold, mm -hmm. you're withholding life. You, God gives you the opportunity. And you only have a few minutes on Sunday morning. And maybe a few minutes at Bible study mm. to kill ignorance. Glory to God. Uh, to deliver people from the bondage of misery and shame. And the word of God comes to break chains and to give understanding of holiness and to give the person a reason for their faith. And you withhold it, that's criminal. Come on. You've committed a crime. Yeah, they ought to go to jail, Bishop. Mm -hmm. Bishop, those, those preachers who get up and don't study and get up and try to say anything to the people of God. Because you all let them. Mm. Don't blame the people. Mm. You see, I just elevated um, ministers <clears throat> and deacons. Excuse me. Sure. <clears throat> we had a big ordination service. You can go online and see it. Okay. And I said to them, as much as, <clears throat> as, much as I approve you, mm -hmm. <clears throat> Excuse me. That's fine, Bishop. <coughs> Let me drink some water. Yes, ma'am. Glory <coughs> to God. <coughs> Excuse me. It's okay, Bishop. It's okay, Bishop. Glory to God. Something got down my throat. I'm sorry. Yes, ma'am. It's fine, Bishop. But the devil know I can talk horse. Come on. But, you know, when, when I elevated them, I said, I can unelevate you too. Don't fool yourself. And I said it publicly. You know why I said it publicly? Because I wanted the people to know this is not performance. Mm -hmm. You can trust the people that we're putting over you. Yes. And if anything happens, you can trust us to be accountable. Bishop. So if you don't have that mentality, if you're just anointing and elevating people just to have numbers. You're not caring about the person in the pew. Jesus. Everybody that comes in the church should feel safe. Yes. Yes. They should know that this person, not perfect, nobody, I'm not perfect. Catch me on one of those days and that Indian comes out. <laughs> but, 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 but they should know that this yes. person is not a hireling. Yes. That this person has a shepherd's heart. Yes. Or this person is being trained to be a shepherd, mm. groomed to be a shepherd. Yes. So that's why the church is not safe. That's why people are leaving the church. They call them the duns, D-O-N-E-S, I'm done with church. What? That They have a lot of reasons why they're done with church. They weren't in church in the first place. But, but come, there's some, come on, Bishop. You know, there's some people that were actually hurt and disappointed yeah. and misused and abused. Yes. Because there was no accountability. Listen, I was a nurse. And if I gave the wrong medication, there was an organization called the American Nurses Association that would call me into, into, into accountability and take my license. Come on. If a lawyer mm. commits perjury, mm. the, 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 the American Bar Association will disbar him and take away his license. Mm. If a doctor... Mm performs malpractice mm. and does anything out of sort. The AMA, the American Medical Association will take away his license. He couldn't practice anywhere. Mm. Where do we have any such organization mm. to say? Come on, Bishop. So it's free for all. Mm. It's free for all. And we're going to be held accountable. And it's so big because there's so many different arms and whatever, whatever. But built into your church should be accountability. Should be where people know you can't, you, you're weak. We all fail. We all fail. But, but discipline is lacking in the church. And you see, when I committed my, my act of stupidity and, and early days went out and married an unsaved man, they sat me down. Mm -hmm. 
for one year. But, you know, they, when they silenced in those days, they, they really sucked it to you. I had to sit in the back of the church and nobody could speak to me. And if they spoke to me, they would be silenced too. I mean, they, they, they just stripped me of it. And I went to church every Sunday. I didn't miss because I knew I had offended God. And I knew I had a fit. And I, I don't care, even if I was messed up, I needed church. So I showed up with my messed up self. That's how it, my sanity was kept. Come on. But in my church, I have sat some people down, mm -hmm. but I still maintained their dignity. I still did it in such a way that they could be reinstated. Yes. But they were dealt with, with integrity, mm -hmm. with covering, and with counseling. That nobody wants to touch that because you want numbers. Ooh. You want numbers. See, listen. And when people know that, when people know that, they know that they can't just do anything they want to do and just open the Bible. And, and no, we all need accountability. If I tell my people, if I mess up and do something crazy, I need to sit myself down and go and get help. Mm -hmm. And then people will feel safe. Mm -hmm. They'll feel like, oh, we're worth something. Yeah. We're being thought about. Yeah. Glory to God, we're being cared for. Yes. <laughs> Bishop, <clears throat> you said a lot, accountability. I know sometimes we, uh, some preachers are preach to say, um, everything is gonna be sweet, everything is gonna be wonderful. You're going to praise God for your new house and all of that. But when it comes to the suffering, you know, that process, can you talk about that? Why we're uh, the older saints or the you are able to hold on. And some of some of the these generation of us now are not able to take anything. Well, well, it's because, well, you know, the era that I grew up in, they they thought about heaven. Oh, heaven. Heaven is mine. Mm -hmm. See, we grew up with that and yeah. they, they had heaven in, in view because they suffered so much. They were in poverty and whatever. The, the, the prosperity gospel came and held up and said, look, you don't have to be poor. You don't have to be poor to be saved. Mm -hmm. And they came after the storefront churches and all the churches and they created a very nice package of materialistic gospel. And it, it, it made people become so earthly stuck. Mm. They forgot about their heavenly assignment and their destination. Mm. And that swept through the churches because now nobody has to be poor. Everybody's going to be a millionaire. Everybody must have a Mercedes. Everybody, mm. but you understand? Mm. And it was, they were bamboozled because not everybody did. You, 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 you can't have a Mercedes and, and can't pay your rent. Come on, Bishop. No, I'm serious. They were not taught stewardship. They were not taught tithing, stewardship, investment, mm -hmm. accountability with your money, because money is a spirit. They were taught, I'm going to be blessed, blessed. And, and, and it's, they come in and they raped the people, and we let them. Mm -hmm. I get up and, and preach. And you give me what's left over. They come in and, and scream and holler, and you have to, you you better have a you better have a certain check. Yes. And they were they were underwritten by the people. You all did that. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So don't be crying now when COVID is here mm. and ain't nobody got nothing. Ain't, ain't nobody what? Mm. Theodicy is 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 a, is a theological name for suffering. Mm. It literally means that. God never said we wouldn't suffer, but he said he would, it's in the suffering that we get to know him. That side of Christianity is not taught. So that's why people are leaving the church. They never heard that before. They were told they weren't supposed to suffer. You give a hundred dollar, you give a $500 line, you jump on one foot and you run down, you write a thousand dollar check. So God is going to give me 50,000. It was a game. It's like going to Las Vegas. It was a gamble. They weren't taught that Christian life includes suffering. Tear up the Bible. Mm. Tear, tear out Joseph. Tear up Daniel. Just tear up the whole Bible. Mm. What character in the Bible didn't suffer? The same Bible that we read. Mm. 
tell me who did not go through the making? Because <laughs> it's only in suffering yes. that we get ugly and we get ugly to get pretty. It's only in suffering. Mm. We don't want him unless we go through. Mm. And, and we rob the people of tenacity, stamina, mm. and endurance. Well, Though you slay me. Yeah, well, I trust you. Bishop, Bishop, Bishop. I, I'm going to ask you with this, the, the generation that's coming on, <clears throat> uh, you know, they're in those classes and they teach different things and those professors teach different things, mm -hmm. uh, probably not in the Bible. Mm -hmm. um, how would you uh, ask or, or share with this uh, generation now that's coming on teaching to teach holiness and, and righteousness? Yeah. What, what has happened is, you know, um, we we want to be liked, okay? Come on, Bishop. We don't want we don't want to help people. We want people to worship us. We we are dying for worship. Come on, Bishop. And you have to be you have to be contented with who you are, so that you don't need people so much that you can't correct them. Mm. See, because if I need you, then I'm not going to correct you. So th this young generation, no matter what they say, they're looking for rea authenticity. That's the word. Yes. They're looking for, you, you believe this? Then live it. Live it in front of me. Mm. You, 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 you have a relationship with God? Then show me how that is. Mm. But they have seen one thing in church, and, mm -hmm. and, and you understand? So they have lost their hope. So, so their attitude is, if you, if, if you can do that mm -hmm. and, and, and still got a church with people, I can do the same thing. All I got to do is go into Google and Google one of them little messages and jump up and carry on. I, I, can, I can do that. I can mm -hmm. do that. But down in the city of their soul, they're crying out for help because life is real. Suicide is real. Drunkenness is mm. real. Sexual addiction is real. So even though they're saying oh, all this stuff, they're still looking. The soul is still crying. There's still a remnant out there that God has mm. chosen to reflect his glory. So the harvest is plenteous, you see. Yes. But the laborers, they're few. So mm -hmm. what they're looking for is authenticity. You know, now, now my, my, my little grandchildren, they, they're here. You know, they, they, they come over here. And, you know, mm, <laughs> yeah, they come over here. And, um, and, and they see me authentically in the morning. Mm -hmm. They see me with rolls in my, my hair. They know, they know that, you know, this is real stuff. This is real stuff. Mm -hmm. they, they see me on. Uh, but the one thing they know is they're going to get a Bible lesson. Hmm. And they're gonna get hands laid on them. They go, go with oil, and they're gonna have morning devotion. Mm -hmm. And we're gonna talk real stuff. We're gonna talk about what they feel. We're gonna talk about anger. We're gonna they these are these are real. You see, relationship, authenticity out of relationship. I don't have to put on any jeans with the the the, the thing coming out, the knees hanging out. You understand? Mm -hmm. And all my boobs dropping down to my belly in front of you to mm -hmm. connect. Mm -hmm. All I have to do is live my faith. Let when my mother died, one of the, the he's 13 years old. When my mother died, you know, he's he he they all came over and they saw me cry and they saw me, they saw me go through a measure of grief in front of them. Mm -hmm. And one of the brothers in the church died, and he was close to one of the grandchildren. And, he, and what he said in counseling to the counselor was. When I saw, they call me Titi. When I saw how Titi handled death with her mother, mm -hmm. I knew I wasn't going to be hysterical. Mm -hmm. She taught me how to handle grief. Mm -hmm. Now, did I sit down and have a lecture? No. I just did it in front of them. Why didn't I lose my mind over my mother? Because she's going to be with the Lord. Did I cry? Yes. Did I hold her? Yes. Did I rock back and forth in pain? But did I fall out like I have no hope? No. Mm. And that stuck with him. Mm. 
it will never leave him. And he was close to his Godfather. He said, when, he, when I saw that, it taught me how to deal with death. That's all people want. True relationship. Yes. Authentic relationship. Not standing behind a pulpit. Not, not going to no big concert or going to no whatever. Just, just have, this is, how, this is how you deal with anger. Mm. One of them yesterday, you know, they're here. I don't know why they're here, but one of them, you know, they're here and, and they're having a fight with the brother. She just, you know, the brother aggravated her and she carried on. It was a teaching moment. Mm -hmm. Anger belongeth in the bosom of a fool. Now, the last time I talked to you, your name was not Fool. Mm. You can handle it differently. If he's doing something, you can sell him. And if he doesn't stop, you get somebody. Because you don't have to lose your mind. I want you to learn this, little girl. Look me in my eye. Because mm. anger will destroy you. Mm. Teach it moment. No lane has no titty, to to t No. Just grabbing the grab the moment. We're too busy living our selfish, sick lives instead of seeing that every moment is an opportunity for authentic relationship. That's what these young people are looking for. Not another choir. You can sing in the bar. Huh? <clears throat> what is Kaya? What's his name? Kaya, whatever. Kanye West. Yeah, what? Mm. You, you can you you can go everywhere else and have these gospel experiences, but living is what they're looking for. Show me how. Show me how. You all have performed theatrics. You have paraded. You have come in front of us with all your bling bling, your ching ching. You you come on TV and talk about your your boyfriend, your girlfriend, your this. But what is the authentic relation? How do I deal with my suicidal moment? Why do I why do I why do I want to cut myself? How how come I don't have a strong sexual identity? Come on, Bishop. Oh. Who dealing with that? Because you know, we, we, we take on the world's definition of how it should be handled. But the Bible said, mm. Jesus have mercy. That in the beginning he created he them. Yeah. Male and listen. You, you you have to you have to make the investment. Mm. People are worth the investment. Somebody did it for me. I'm the product of investment. Mm -hmm. They're dead and gone, but they left something for me to live for. And that's what I want. That's what I, and every preacher, every minister. You know, I'm not perfect. I'm not the most perfect pastor. Some of my members would, you know, tell you about all my little idiosyncrasies. But the thing about this is, I, be I believe this thing. I, be I believe it. And I believe if you live it in, your, in, in every moment, your, your mad moment, your sane moment, your disappointed moment, and that word becomes real to you, that's light and life. And you can pass it on. Pass it on. <laughs> Bishop. Sir. <laughs> Let me get a, my thoughts together here. Mm -hmm. Bishop, a question yeah. I would ask you there, you know, preachers that uh, have a, a zeal to preach. Yes, 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 yes. Um, and then they are some that you should be called to preach. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what how do we maybe share to someone if, to know the difference between those two? Well, I think we're limiting ourselves because the Bible said if a man desires the office of a bishop, and we're not taught what bishop in the Bible there just means a pastor. That's mm -hmm. all it means. I don't know what we anyway, <laughs> that's another story. But, but um it if it, it's if you even, sometimes you have a desire and you don't even know that it's God because you haven't been taught or somebody, somebody didn't point it out to you. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? I was anointed to preach at 16 by my former pastor. She laid hands on me because that's the gift of the senior pastor to mm -hmm. see. Mm -hmm. Paul saw Timothy. Mm -hmm. Paul saw Titus. Mm -hmm. 
Paul saw Aquila and Priscilla, uh, Priscilla. Paul saw Apollos. That was his gift. That was, he used to gather the next generation. He traveled with about 25 or more people. He saw them and Jesus did the same thing. Come follow me and I will make you. That's the, that's the paradigm of ministry. Nobody calls themselves. You understand? You have a desire, but somebody has to, somebody in leadership has to recognize it. And, and, and the desire, like Nehemiah, I just want to build the wall. That was the will of God. You see what I'm saying? So some people, just, they just have a desire. They don't know. Just like a kid, he doesn't know he's going to be a great musician. He just likes to tinkle with, with, with. somebody has to come and say, oh, I, I'm going to take you to music lessons because mm -hmm. music is in you. Mm -hmm. You see, but the church, the church now identifies those gifts and then exploits those gifts. They ought to be groomed. Mm -hmm. Here, here's what I told those people that, that we were trying to elevate. I don't even know if we did a good job now, but we we're trying to elevate. I said, the church is not, a, I'm not Don King. I'm not no Don King. Mm -hmm. I ain't promoting no fighter. Mm -hmm. This is not, the church is not to promote people. The church is to equip. That's all I'm supposed to do, equip you. And he gave, and he led captivity captive, and he gave gifted people unto the church. Why did he give these gifted people? So that you will be what? Built up, edified, and equipped to do the ministry that the Lord has given you. And the ministry is not a private enterprise. Come on, bitch. The ministry belongs to the church. Come on. The ministry is not for you to develop a tagline and a name and a brand. Mm. You ain't no cow. It's not for you to develop a brand. It's mm. for you to take what you've been equipped to do to build a local body or to build the place where God has planted you. And that's why nobody believes in the church because everybody's a star. See? And the equipping, the equipping is training. You know, you, 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 you can sing, sweetheart. Yes, you can. But you haven't been to Bible study. So what you singing? Mm. Hmm? You, 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 can't, you can't find a scripture. Mm. So you can riff. You, you can riff and everybody will throw their socks and their shoes all over the place. But, you, you know, mm. you, you can preach a little bit. You know, you know Jesus wept. And you can make somebody else weep. But you didn't clean the bathroom. You didn't clean the bathroom. Because you see, if you don't care about where the saints go in and do their private stuff, come on, you shouldn't preach to them. Ooh. I should want the bathroom mm. to be spotless because that's where my people go in and take care of their privacy. Mm. So if I don't care about that, why should I stop in the pulpit? You know, and profile. Mm -hmm. how, how how is your mother? How is your mother? How is your mother, sweetheart? How is you? How is your son doing? Mm -hmm. I hear that he's failing in school. Can we? Can we? Can we find a tutor for him? <clears throat> if you don't serve on that level, mm -hmm. go over to Sister So and So's house and serve communion. Mm -hmm. You want to serve it in the church? I'm teaching you how to serve it. Mm -hmm. That's another story because we don't have no community. But, but, but I wanted to take, mm -hmm. this is the broken body of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Before you preach a sermon, serve the spirit of man with this communion. Mm -hmm. See, if we, then you can find out who really called because then they don't show up. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, you know, mm -hmm. Bishop, I think, I think, you know, my time is up. I said, I, I agree, baby. I agree. Mm -hmm. Yes. When, when we go to Word Alive, so says yes. When we go to Word Alive, and Word Alive is our medical mission. I thought the Lord called me to nursing. The Lord called me to bring nurses and doctors to hurting people. So when we go to Word Alive, we have to get up six o'clock in the morning. And thousands of people are standing online 
from three and four o'clock in the morning just to get an aspirin. And I, and I took all the grandchildren. I said to them, I have never whipped you. Mm. You know, because I believe in talking. I don't believe in whipping. I said, but I will. If you go down there and act like you're not going to help me with this, you, you, you're not going to do it. Mm. You're going to learn that this is ministry. You're not going to work. You're not going to be raised up to be a star mm. when God said, I didn't come into this world to be served, mm. but I came to serve. Jesus. And they work for, ain't nobody, what? Mm. They work until they turn red, because some of them are high yellow, excuse me for saying that. <laughs> and they, until the sun, I say, mm. go drink some water, baby, put some water on you, put some cold water, drink some coconut water, sit here for a few minutes, and then get up and keep moving. Mm. That's training. Yes. And I watch some people. And I said to myself, you're, you're not called in my mind because mm -hmm. this is where the calling starts. Mm. If you don't love me, you can't love my sheep. And if you can't care for the sheep, you, know, you want to be a star. You want the sheep to love you. Mm. And that's the measuring seat that every preacher should look for. Every pastor should see how this person serves. Come on, bitch. We'll put some purple shirt on them and a big chain that we don't even know if it's gold. Mm. See? That's mm. right. We just promoting, just promoting, just promoting. Because mm. that's a feather for our cap. Mm -hmm. And what we're doing is exploiting the church. That's why COVID came. Mm. That's why COVID came. COVID came to stop the foolishness. Are we still doing it? We didn't get the memo yet. That's why COVID ain't over. I know y'all gonna be mad at me for saying that. You know what I'm saying? But what can I tell you? Mm -hmm. You can't tell me that something can shut the whole world down and it is from China. It ain't China. Mm -mm. No, China don't have that kind of power. Mm -hmm. And shut the church down? Mm -hmm. Where you can't even sing? Mm -hmm. You can't gather? Mm -hmm. Get the memo. Start it all over again. When you get back in, what is your post-pandemic agenda? Come on, Bishop. No, what you gonna do? Back to the same thing? No. Have you thought about have you thought about how to prepare your people to deal with a pandemic? You think that one pandemic means no more pandemic? You mean another pandemic could never come? So when you get back, you got to teach your people disaster preparedness. Yes. How do you deal with a hurricane? Yes. How do you deal if there's no water? Mm. So it's more than just coming back together. It's coming back together to build your people to live in a world that's falling apart. Mm -hmm. So it ain't coming back together so you could march down the aisle and slap everybody upside their head and, and give them a title. Mm -hmm. You're building a community. Mm -hmm. I said a community, a community that takes care of itself. You know, our little church is in a little strip. We're just there temporarily. We're gonna get a we're gonna get a church real soon. Mm -hmm. And down two doors down is a Hasidic Jews. And guess what they have? They have their own urgent care. Mm -hmm. You know why they think like that? Because they know in the time of a famine, mm -hmm. in the time of rationing, they'll be the last people to get the medicine. So you know what they say? We better take care of ourselves. Mm -hmm. And in my mind, mm -hmm. I think just like them. Mm -hmm. It's more than just coming together to sing and clap. It's building a community. The first church survived because they had internal community structure. If I die, you be the baby's godmother to raise him in the faith. Mm. They built in things mm. so that it could continue. Mm. We ain't building nothing but ourselves.
I know I'm talking too much. You no make bitch. you make me talk too much, Elder Cornelius. You shouldn't no. make me do this. No you, are, you are not nice to me. You're making me talk too much. Mm -mm. Bishop. Talk too much. I don't ever want to go back. Uh, my church already knows we, we're not going back to what used to be. Health issues, mm -hmm. economic issues, environmental issues, survival issues mm -hmm. because, of in, because of climate change, mm -hmm. you, pandemic plagues. The Bible told us in the last days, we don't need no special interpretation. In the last days, this is what to expect. So if you, if you tell me, there's a storm coming. What am I going to do? I'm going to get stuff from my window. I'm going to make sure that food is in the house. I'm going to set it up so, because storm is coming. Mm. Well, we want to get back without plan. Mm. It's the preaching and the teaching and creating a community. Mm. You understand? So that your children will be able to live to carry on the gospel. Ella Cornelius, you're not good for me. <laughs> you're not good for me. <laughs> Bishop, you were sharing in your conversation, you were sharing about uh, uh, servant. And uh, my church, uh, I was there for about 20 years. And I never forgot that my pastor always shared that we had to clean up our church, that we had to clean up, that we had to take the mothers home. We had to do all of those things before you would even think about having a conversation about preaching. Yeah. And I thought that was so cruel, Bishop. I said, yeah. no, mm -hmm. wait a minute. What? And, as, and he told me this one thing. He said, you have to love the church. That's and right. That's he said, right. if you don't love the church and if you don't love the people, you can't do anything in here. And when he said that, I was like, well, what do you mean? I don't love the people. Well, he said, it's got to be in your heart. That's right. He said, when you get down there and clean up the bathroom, that ain't for you. That's for somebody else. And I was just like, and I thought he was just, he's still living, 80 something years old. I thought that it was the cruelest way. I said, is this what you do? He was teaching me. And having yeah, me to yeah, die. You better love it. You better love this memory. Listen to me. The thing that's wrong with us is you know, when you raise people wrong, it's like you raising a child without any, without any instruction. Mm -hmm. They jump all over the couch, mm -hmm. you know, um, and, the, and, then, and then when they go out, you get embarrassed. Mm -hmm. um, if if people, people are to be trained, if Jesus is God and came out of heaven and had a discipleship program, what makes us think that we can have ministers without training. Jesus is God. Mm -hmm. He came out of heaven and he took three years to train them. Mm -hmm. Why do you think we just go name people, claim people, anoint people and don't train them and then send them out? You see what I'm saying? Jesus, never mind McCullough. McCullough ain't got no sense. McCullough don't know what she talking about, but look at Jesus. Mm -hmm. And then even when he trained them, Peter denied him. Mm -hmm. And Judas betrayed him. Mm -hmm. So even in the midst of all of that, it took for them to have the Holy Spirit pour out in their souls. And then he tell them, don't go nowhere and lay hands on the sick and do nothing until you go and be filled. You know why you need to be filled with the Spirit? Because you're going to have to give your life for what you believe. You can't tell some of these pretty boys and girls that they're going to have to die for their faith. They're too pretty. Mm. Mm. They're too wonderful. You can't tell them anything. Mm. And they have their own truth. Yes. That's a new, they're, living, they're living their own truth. Listen, what kind of damnable thing is that? Mm. When Jesus said, I am the way. Yes. I am the truth. What kind of... And they have a following. But I'm encouraged. Mm -hmm. You know why I'm encouraged? Because Elder Cornelius loved God. Yeah. 
Glory to God. Yes. You know I'm encouraged? Yes. Because he told Elijah, mm. hey, I'm, you, what you doing up on that juniper tree? Huh? Yeah. Why, yeah. why are you? Well, you know, Jezebel, she, she done kill all the prophets and they're only 50 in the cave and then nobody. Boy, you know who you talking to? Come on. I got seven, and now 7,000 is not the exact number. It's just a description of the perfect number. Mm -hmm. I got 7,000 that have not bowed, and here's the other thing, have not kissed. <laughs> oh, Lord Jesus, oh, Lord. Lord, I can't, I can't stand it. I have to drink more water because I'm talking too much. <laughs> Come on. You understand that there are people in Zimbabwe, people in Australia, you understand? People in some remote village in Indonesia. They're, I'm not talking about Western Christianity. I'm not talking about these fine, wonderful, you know, great people. I'm talking about people that walk barefooted, people that are hungry for the gospel, people in other areas that they don't speak like us, but they are called, chosen, and being equipped to carry the gospel. I'm encouraged. Yes. I'm encouraged. I'm not discouraged. I don't even, I, I don't look at Facebook. I can't because then, you know, it just, I don't bother. Mm. Because people spend a lot of time surfing, surfing. I don't have, you don't have to defend the gospel. You just have to live it. Come on, Bishop. Now you, you have apologetics to explain. Mm. You have the apologetics to explain. But I don't have to get up there and have a fight with you. That's what he told Timothy. Don't get engaged in that. Mm -hmm. Just be an example of believer. Preach in season, out of season. Rebuke. You know? Yes. Exhort. Yes. Instruct. Yes. And live. Yes. That's all you have to do. Somebody will hear you. Mm -hmm. so, listen. Somebody will hear you and get a taste. Listen. Mm -hmm. It's a taste. You see what I'm saying? And, and you don't even have to open your mouth. You, you, you get a taste. That you, you walk in a room and you could be having your worst hair day looking like the cat dragged in. And you just sit down and the fumigation of the gospel. You, you had a good prayer that morning and it's still, you know how it lingers. Uh, mm -hmm. These people don't know how it lingers. You, 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 you sit down here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. you, 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 you're you in a public place now so you know you can't go up. But you hear, mm -hmm. Oh Jesus. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you say to God, God, don't do me bad now. Don't make me no no make them arrest me because yeah. I feel something coming. And just sitting there with that kind of consciousness draws somebody. And, and they come and so you know, you look so peaceful. You there's a glow on you, mm. and all of a sudden it just bursts out. Yeah. God, let me tell you something. Mm. There's a God that reigns. Hey, thank you, Lord. And there's a God that's concerned about you. And there's something going on in your house that's about to drive you out of your mind. But God is able to deliver you if we pray right now. Can I pray with you? Mm. See, that's how it flows. Mm. No big pulpit, no, no blog, no nothing. Just one-on-one. -on -one. Mm. Huh? Just living it, living it. Yeah. I went to a, a, a vacation, you know, you know, and it was a nice hotel. And, and I went, you know, the, you get the feet and the nail, all the, all the stuff that you're supposed to do. And the woman is doing my fingernails and whatever, and she's talking. And the Holy Ghost said, don't get cute up in here with no fingernail. Mm. Uh, this woman is about to lose her mind. Mm. And I said to her, I said a few words to her. And I said, where's your children? And she busts out crying. Mm. She said, I, I can't have any children. And I lost one. And my husband wants to leave me. Mm. I said, Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus. Mm. <laughs> now I'm getting my nails. I'm praying she don't mess up my nails now. I said, Father, listen, in that moment, mm. that's what life is all about. And you, I left there, I left there full. There was no misery. It wasn't the nail. Because mm. the polish was messed up before I got upstairs. It wasn't the nail. It was the joy, mm. the joy of knowing that the enemy lost a foothold in that woman's life. That was the joy. Come on, Bishop. 
It was better than going and standing before a big crowd with all the people talking about go ahead, McCullough, and half of them didn't hear nothing I said. That one and one, like the woman at the well. Come on, Bishop. <laughs> Woo! That's what made Jesus so phenomenally great. Yes. The woman at the well. Just come and sit down. Just sit down like a weary traveler. Mm. And wreck Samaria, the whole city, the whole city. Did you hear what I said? The whole city. Mm. And I, I'm going to live to see it. I'm going to live to see a whole nother generation wreck cities. Yes. <laughs> yes, I am. I'm going to see it. I ain't talking about these, 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 these people. These, I'm not going there. I don't have the time or the energy by any means necessary. By, mm. means. by everything that the Lord has put in my hands to do. And I feel the help of the Lord now. <laughs> by every opportunity that he gives to me, mm. may it count. May it count. May it count. And it doesn't have to be on stage and it doesn't have to be in the lights. It can be way in a back room. Mm. But when you through a life is transformed and that life affects another life and that life affects another life. And next thing you know, there's a whole lot of people that you'll never met and will never meet on earth whose life has been transformed by that one encounter. Mm. That's what I enjoy. I enjoy that more than the pulpit, I'm telling you. Because by the time they wear me out, you know, with, you know, A and B selection, by the time they do all that, you know. But that one and one situation yeah. where you actually see chains being broken. You see, I'm going to say this with you, something, um, 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 Elder. I started in the street. Mm -hmm. I didn't start at Azusa. And mm -hmm. I didn't start in, in, in um, Woman Do Out Loose. Mm -hmm. that, that's, you know. Mm -hmm. When I was young, you know, I, I, I was on the choir, I was on the usher board, I was in Sunday school, I was in it all, 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 all. And one day I woke up and said, God, there's something more. I feel a pull. Mm -hmm. And none of the young people wanted to go with me because they always thought I was strange. And it's true, I am. I, I'm, I'm a little extra. And so... I got up on Saturday mornings. The Holy Ghost said, get up on Saturday mornings and go to 42nd Street and 8th Avenue. And at that time, it was a red light district. They hadn't cleaned it up. Mm -hmm. I had on a little black skirt and a white blouse. Real saintly now. <laughs> and, I, and I went and stood on the corner. I, I didn't have enough sense to be afraid, you see, because I felt the pull. Mm -hmm. And I stood on the corner and I would minister, and the shoe shine man says, I got you. I'm, I'm your security. Anybody come near you, I got you. Mm -hmm. And I stood there and I would minister. And I would say, Can I talk to you? And I remember a young man Kate was passing by. It was Saturday evening, and the night was getting to get ready to start. And he's walking around with these people. And I said, Young man, you're from out of town, aren't you? He said, Yes. I said, Your grandmother is saved. Mm. And she's praying for you. And I'm telling you, danger awaits you down the road. Mm. And you came to New York to have fun. Mm. But your grandmother's prayer is keeping, keeping you from death. And the young man started to weep. Mm. I messed up his Saturday Night Live. I did. Mm. One. Mm. And then now I'm getting ready to go home. And, you know, nobody getting saved. And two drunks came and just started talking loud and yeah, yeah, yeah. Now you remember now I'm young. I ain't got nobody with me. Mm. And the Holy Ghost said, open mm. up the Bible and just start reading the scripture. Mm. And the man fell at my feet and got sobered. Wow. Jeez. Sobered. He was stinking drunk. Mm. He said, Miss, uh, Miss Jackie, I want to be saved. I mm. said, I'm taking you to my church right now. We're going on the train. Just behave yourself. Don't be loud and carry on. Just come with me on the train. And you see, I'm crazy. Now. I'm by myself. Ain't no missionary wanting to go with me. No deacon wanting to go with me. Ain't nobody want to go with me because it ain't high profile. Ain't high. Mm. What? Mm. I got on the train. 
And this is 42nd Street to 135th Street. So it was a real ride. When I got to the church, I said to the deacon, this man wanted to be baptized. And, and deacon said to me, we ain't, we ain't going to open up. Ooh. I said, all right, all right, thank you. Mm. And the Holy Ghost said to me, put him in the YMCA. He has nowhere to go. Now, I just started working as a nurse, and, and I had a little money saved for my first car. First car. The Lord said, you take that money out the bank, and you put him in the, in the Y and pay for him. Mm. And then you send somebody to buy him underwears and drop it off and then pay for his lunch and mm -hmm. don't let him know. And I paid for him and he stayed there until he left. Now, I don't have no money for the car now. And the car dealership called me and said, Miss Jackie, your car is ready. My sister never comes to Harlem, never comes to the job, never, ever, 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 ever. Mm -hmm. I looked up and she's standing up in the nurse's station. I said, what are you doing here? Somebody sick? She says, no, I just came to see what you're doing here. I said, I need money for a car. She said, give me five minutes. I'm going to the back. Now, listen, I want you to understand my sister now. Mm. She's like my father. The green comes off the dollar. He, listen, they don't play when it comes to money. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. My sister doesn't play with money. Mm. She's like my father. My father, you know, he, uh, when it comes to money, uh, mm. for her. For my sister to go to the bank without any explanation mm -hmm. and gave me the exact amount, I picked up the car the same day. Jesus. The story doesn't end there. Mm -hmm. Years later, I'm working in at Elam, the inner city church, and I'm coming, walking down the street, Nostrand and Fulton. Now, they cleaned it up now through gentrification, but in that time, when you're walking down the street, you don't, you don't look back. Mm -hmm. You walk straight and you hold your pocketbook a certain way because you know where you are. Mm -hmm. And I heard somebody holler, Miss Jackie. And I didn't turn around. Miss Jackie, how shall we escape mm -hmm. if we neglect so great a salvation? Jesus. And I turned around. Mm -hmm. He said, I've been saved ever since. He said, I, I'm back. I got my life together. That one encounter mm. with me giving up. You see, that's another thing. Mm. We ain't going to give up no money. Mm -mm. Mm. I wouldn't want to live any other way. I wouldn't want to live any other way. I wouldn't want to live any other way. I wouldn't want to be just a preaching machine, preaching and profiling and dressing and, and stilettos in the pulpit and hearing, and weaving, whatever. That mm -hmm. ain't no lie. I, listen, keep all of that. Now, I like to look nice and, and look good and what all of that. But if that's all there is to it, mm -hmm. at the end of the day, may the work I've done. Speak. Come on. It's your when I stand before my, you think I'm playing. I'm not just saying this because you interview me. I talk like this all the time. May the work I've done speak for me. When I stand before my God, I want to hear him say, well done. And what happens is we get in the church and we get settled and we get important and we forget the outreach. We forget the outreach. We're building a school in Nigeria, in Liberia. And when I see those children dressed up, going to school, talking about the Lord, getting ready to change their nation. And that's all Pastor Newbel is saying, that this school is going to produce leaders that's going to change a country that was in a civil war for 13 years and was almost destroyed. And that one little school right there is going to change the nation. That's what we live for. And if you don't live for that, you're empty. That's why you need to have two lives, mm. church life and street life. Mm. Because after you leave the pulpit, you need something else mm. because you're empty. And you see, the more you give in the church is the more your, your spirit needs to be filled. So if you're not doing God's work on a daily basis, mm. that emptiness will drive you to drink. Mm. Did I say drink? Jesus. Come on with me, El. Did I say drink? Yes, you did. I said drink, right? Yes, ma'am. I don't mm. have to say nothing else.
You know what I'm saying? Bishop. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and every every preacher that falls can rise again. We have to go and get those wounded preachers who never had a chance in the first place, mm. who were given too much responsibility too early, mm. at the best of them, who were never given a chance to make mistakes and mm. grow out of it, they were never given a chance to mature. We thrusted them out. Mm. We promoted them, and then when they failed, we dropped them. Mm -hmm. May they rise again. Praise the Lord. And you have some friends. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Don't let them go. Don't let them go. Mm -hmm. Don't let them go. Don't let them go. <laughs> I don't know what to say at this moment, Bishop. But I'm going to say to you, you all, we have gotten something that was ordained for us to get today mm -hmm. by the Bishop. Bishop McCullough, I want you to know, and I'm not going to cry, praise the Lord. <laughs> my wife is watching and my children, I'm going to be nice. <laughs> Tears are good. <laughs> oh my God. Tears but I want you to know, Bishop, you have said stuff that's going to keep me for the rest of my life. Mm. And I will be able to be standing 10 and 20 and 50 years from now. Mm -hmm. I want to come to you and say, I'm still standing, still standing. in the Lord. Yeah, yeah. And those of you all that are out that are listening tonight, mm. learn all you can and can all you learn. So though what you heard tonight, put that in the can and hold it because you're going to need it. Mm. It's going to come up again. So, Bishop, as we close tonight, I can sit and listen to you forever, but I know you got to go. I know you do. <laughs> but, Bishop, if there is maybe one or two things you could share to uh, a pastor. Mm -hmm. I remember you were preaching, and you preached about the scripture when it says, well, there is no vision the people perish. Mm -hmm. and we understood, wait, we understand now what the scripture meant about where there is no vision, the people perish. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You would encourage that pastor to get back in the book. Mm -hmm. That he might be able to have something to say when he or she gets to the, the desk the mm -hmm. next time that they get there. And then we'll be done, Bishop. You mm -hmm. would encourage that pastor. Well, the, the, the thing, self-care. Yes. Self-care. Um, this pandemic has forced us to deal with ourselves you know um we're not in the church we're not we had a lot of time i've enjoyed this time home mm -hmm. yes. i've enjoyed it you know i don't miss a plane but 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 the thing about it is devotions to me devotion is is like water mm -hmm. and we 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 always giving out or we think that we have to be you know this rescuer, saver, whatever. I don't do anything without my devotion. Mm. Some people can't do anything without coffee. I can't do anything without devotion. Mm. That's my self-care. Mm. I've got too many things that I have to, too many decisions to make. Too many people are depending on me. Too many people, too many spirits fight. Mm. Too many, too many things that are coming at me from different you understand? Yes. I couldn't live and have my right mind if I didn't have a word from the Lord every day. And he speaks. Some people say, oh, yes. God talked to you all the time. No, his word speaks to me. And in, in the morning, you know, I, and then I journal. I, I, I journal. I write it out just in case I forget. And then I share it with somebody so I can be accountable. Yes. So when I'm talking crazy and stupid, they say, well, didn't the Lord say this to you? Because I, if I don't have it, mm -hmm. I'll slip. Mm -hmm. There's no, there's no guarantee that I won't slip or stray. Mm -hmm. There's no guarantee that I won't do something dumb. I've done it. I've done it. Mm -hmm. But that morning, that 
And if, if I can't get it in the morning, I'm going to, there's a consciousness. Mm. There's an awareness that I am accountable to him and that he's with me. He's with me. He's with me. That alone keeps me straight. So, you know, if I'm in the car and, and, and there's somebody getting ready to do something stupid, I, I can't curse like I want to. Mm. That devotion, self-care. Because if I don't have care for myself, I can't care for you. Never mind the anointing. It's going to come. Gifts and callings are without repentance. You got preachers that are preaching that are atheists. You got preachers that are preaching that don't believe that they preach. So it's not the gift. We're impressed with the gift. It's the moment of quietness. It's the time when you hear the Lord say, come away, my beloved. Mm. When he gives me answers mm. and, and when, I, when I don't know what to do. And, mm. you know, and he says, wait. When he tells me, shut up, shut up. You're talking too much now. Or he says, this is how you do it. Or he says, I already worked it out. Self-care. So by the time I get to you, mm -hmm. I can help you with yours. That's all I want to say. Not another name, mm -hmm. not another apostle, not another chief apostle. <coughs> Self-care. Mm -hmm. Quiet time, getting away. Sometimes I just, in this pandemic, I haven't had a vacation, you know? <laughs> but I'm vacationing in my house. And every now and then in the summertime, I would go outside and sit in front of the water and just spend time refreshing my spirit. So that I won't be cruel and mean, disappointed and frustrated. I can maintain my faith in God. Must I be carried to the skies on flowery beds of ease while others fight to win the prize and sail the bloody seas? No, I must fight if I must reign. Increase my courage, Lord. I bear the toil, mm -hmm. endure the pain, reported by your word. God bless you. Bishop, thank you. I don't even know what else to say, Bishop, but thank you for taking the time to, and this 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 comments is just, just it's been lighting up all night. I'm trying to look at them, but listen, you all, I mean, so many people on and commenting about the bishop and what you're saying, you're helping them. I have pastors on here. I have uh, chairmen. Everybody is on here talking, listening to the bishop. And I want to tell you, thank you. You're welcome. And, you. and we will meet again. You yes. Yes. Yeah. We, we can't love the same things in terms of the word of God, and we don't meet again. Yes, bishop. You know what I'm saying? I, there's, some, there's some people I read don't, you know, wouldn't like to meet again, <laughs> but you know, yeah, but. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even get to the songs you read. I didn't even get to the songs, Bishop. I can't even get to them. We'll meet again. Bishop, thank you. You're welcome. I, I, I enjoy talking with you. you. You stir me. You make me get stirred. And I love the stir, Bishop. I love it. Yeah. And yeah. I kept saying to myself, I said, um, you know, we're our Bishop allow us to operate on this platform mm -hmm. and to always pray and ask the Lord who do we put on here? Because you, you know, I've learned from my pastor, you don't know, put everybody in front of the people of God. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter about, you know, mm -hmm. popularity, personality, but you mm -hmm. be careful of who you put in front of the people of mm -hmm. God. Mm -hmm. And so I was so happy with your um, administrative staff, uh, that's Elder uh, Moses. Yeah. She was always wonderful. Yeah, yeah. Everything I asked, she just took care of it phenomenally. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times, you know, it's different with different people. Mm -hmm. And I want to share with you, I had a great encounter with her. She was well, wonderful. She, she's been with me for 30 years. So, you know, yeah. And she just lost her father and just came back from burying her father today. So she came back just in time. So I'll tell her. 
<laughs> Tell her thank you so very much. Yeah. Thank you Bishop, for being with us. And you pray for me. I have a new book coming out. Yes. Come on, Bishop. Talk about the book, Bishop. And, and the book is entitled The Locket. And um, it's going to be a series of books on the basics, on the foundational basics of Christianity. And this book is about the doctrine of adoption. We don't know anything about that. We're not orphans. Mm -hmm. We're in a family and it's royal. <laughs> so, um, and, and the book will be ready hopefully for Christmas. I would make sure I yeah. send you a copy. Bishop, make but sure. I just, I just want the people to read this book. It's very small. It's, it's like a booklet. It's not like my other books that, you know, people have to read it in, in little pieces for 10 <laughs> years. But, but this is a very easy read because it's going to be the doctrines that you know salvation yes. justification yes. adoption sanctification holy spirit and glorification wow. so it's called the locket very very easy read and it's going to make people that that feel rejected and alienated and don't know where they belong in the family of god in the kingdom of god it should bring that sense of assurance yes. that I am not an orphan, neither am I forsaken. Mm. So I just wanted to share that. I'm excited about that book. I really am. Well, Bishop, we're going to get behind you 100% and do what we can for that book to spread it. Whatever we need to do, we'll do just yeah. that. Yes, sir. Bishop, we love you the best. Thank Although you. I have never seen you in person, but one day <laughs> I will take my wife. I'm and sure. children. And, and I would love to meet her. I would love to meet her. I'm coming. <laughs> and you and when you come, you you know you we'll have a wonderful time. Yes. Well, you know, because I love to dance and shout and carry on. Oh yeah, Bishop. I sing your birthday celebration. I'm gonna get off. I'm gonna oh. go long now. I sing your birthday celebration. And uh, you know, y'all got to rejoice and Bishop got to laying hands on the folks at the birthday celebration. Mm -hmm. I said that's what I'm talking about. So Bishop, and, I and, and we weren't drinking wine. Either. No, Bishop. It, it, it was um, sparkling cider. I just want to say that. It looked That's like right. it was in that glass, but it wasn't champagne. No, Bishop. I know. I just want to say that. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll meet again. I promise you. Yes. It's, it's a pleasure. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord continue to stir you. May you be the man that will turn other men to Christ. Jesus' name, amen. Bless you, Bishop. <clears throat> Love y'all. <clears throat> All right, y'all, we done it tonight. The Bishop was on tonight, and we thank the Lord for our Bishop, Brother Bishop, Bishop McCullough, sharing with us, pouring out to us about certainly what you believe in. Thank you all so very much, and we will see you on the next time. God bless you, and we will see you later.